MPB Classics is proud to present the Visual Artists Collection, featuring four documentaries on some of Mississippi's most celebrated creative minds. From 1992, The Mad Potter of Biloxi, George E. Orr, an hour-long exploration into the mind of the Mississippi native, known for his eccentric ceramic pieces and even more eccentric personality. The blacksmith potter, as he was called by the locals, peddled his early functional wear along the streets of Biloxi. At the same time, he was stockpiling his best work for a special event. The first year, I got enough dimes to cover my frame, but not to fill it up. That was the year of the New Orleans Cotton Centennial Exposition. I had over 600 pieces there, no two alike. The world's industrial and cotton centennial of 1884. It was to bring to New Orleans all the wonder and wealth of modern inventions and renewed commerce. There was hope that it would heal the city's damaged post-war economy. The exposition created in the Abouliador a passion for fairs that never left him. Greatest art potter on earth. You prove the contrary. He would set up his portable kiln, shout to the passers-by, and sell, generally, nothing. But they remembered him, as did other exposition artists, for his antics. From 1977, The Islander, the story of Walter Anderson and his numerous visits to Horn Island to study and find inspiration in the natural world. We hardly ever saw him. Our mother made it seem a natural thing. Mama, Daddy's leaving. He was an artist. We accepted that. He would row out to Horn Island, 16 miles off the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, rowing sometimes for three days in a little skiff. He'd stay out there alone for weeks. first poetry is always written by sailors and farmers who sing with the wind in their teeth. The second poetry is written by scholars and students and wine drinkers who have learned to know a good thing. Third poetry is sometimes never written, but when it is, it is written by those who have brought nature and art into one thing. Horn Island is the place where Walter Anderson was able to live his third poetry. There, it seems more than anywhere else, he found what he needed, the images he would turn into art. From 1982, Dusty Bonger, The Life of an Artist. Spend an afternoon with the acclaimed artist as she recounts episodes from her past, gives insight into her creative process, and creates a stunning painting in her home studio. Sometimes I look at a blank wall and I'll, oh, I'll feel like, ooh, gee, I'll get a canvas up there. I think I, ooh, I'd like to, ooh, I wonder. And, it's, there's nothing definite. I don't look at it and say, gee, I'll make a circle. The circle has to grow because if I say, gee, I'll make a circle, it never turns out any good because then I make a circle and I get literary. And if you're going to paint abstractly, you can't be literary. That's the one thing that I guard against. If I find myself saying, well, I had an awful lot of red there. I better get a little green. I knew, I know, I, I've lost it. I've lost it. Because I begin to verbalize. And it has to, it has to come from deeper than verbalization. It has to be something that springs forth out of, out of you. It's a part of you. And from 1992, Marie Hull, her changing canvas. The artist's many friends and contemporaries share anecdotes about her life and enduring legacy. She 
came up to me one day and said, don't you think you ought to take some lessons from me? And I said, yes. The, the classes on her porch were always a lot of fun. There was always a lot of talk and a lot of humor. I went over there a couple of Saturdays, and I'd see these people out on a screen porch painting and going through the, 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 the equivalent of lessons, I suppose. But it all looked like a great garden party to me. Well, she was strict and uh, serious about what she was teaching, and that impressed me a lot and helped me because I, she made me do things I didn't want to do. And she was critical when she thought she should be critical. I feel a certain uh, closeness with many people that I've taught, mm -hmm. and most of my best friends are recruited from former students, mm -hmm. and they're all over the state. So that develops a close relationship, and uh, that varies according to that underlying motive of the student's work. If they work for quality, I feel closer to them than if they're working to put a frame around something and sell it to some ignorant person real quick, you know, and hang over the pile of mantle <laughs> so everybody would brag on them. And it's like playing the piano by ear. I'm less interested in, in um, students like that than, than the ones who put quality first. All of these great shows are available for free at video.mpbonline.org for a limited time. We hope you enjoy.